Hello, my name's Andrew, and today we're doing a first impression review of the Super Note Nomad. So I'm gonna talk about my top 10 features after trying it out for a week so far, but just for some background, I'm an illustrator, writer, filmmaker, so I'm kind of like the ideal person for a productivity tablet like this. And I used to work on an iPad, which I really love, to be honest. You know, I'd use apps like Procreate, and it was great because you had all this access to functionality, but first of all, it was really distracting. Like I'd be drawing or trying to get work done, and then I'd like open up, you know, Instagram or YouTube, and there was just too much temptation, you know? And then on top of that, an LED screen, it's really hard to look at that for, you know, hours on end. And even just working for 45 minutes, my eyes would start to get bloodshot and I would just feel tired and headachey. So eventually I just had to sell my iPad and I switched to a Books Tab Ultra C, which is another e-ink device that happened to be a color one. Um, and that was definitely better. Um, I didn't have any eye strain. You know, I really love e-ink. It's a great technology, but unfortunately you still have apps. So even though it wasn't quite as distracting as the iPad, I still had problems with it. So I ended up selling it and then it was kind of sad because I felt like I really liked this sort of digital productivity tablet sort of thing for drawing and all sorts of stuff. But you know, it just didn't work for me. It was just exhausting and it was more distracting than productivity, you know? Um, so I didn't uh, really have anything to use for the past six months or so. And I had been seeing a lot of videos about Remarkable, so I thought, okay, well, um, maybe I'll send them an email, see if they're interested in sending me a tablet um, for review. But it was just like, I sent the email and then there's just nothing. I got no reply back um, until a few weeks later and then someone finally replied to me and they're like, oh, sorry, um, we can't really send you a tablet, but you could buy one. So I'm like, fine. So I just bought one and I thought I'd try it out. And you know, the drawing experience was good, honestly. Um, it felt very paper-like, but it was just like, I didn't know what to do with it, you know? I thought it doesn't really do anything else and it doesn't have that many features. So kind of like, what's the point? Like, why wouldn't I just draw on paper, you know? So again, my sort of minimalist tablet journey ended. Um, and then I decided to give a shout out to Supernote and just see if there was something different because they have a smaller size called the Nomad and it's kind of like the same um, size as like a small notebook, which is what I'm really familiar um, to using for sketching and journaling and stuff like that. So I sent them an email and it was like a day or two later, they replied and they're really helpful. They're like, yeah, sure. We'll send you a tablet out to review. And here's some things you might really enjoy as like a filmmaker and illustrator. So it was like a good experience, you know, because a lot of companies now don't have good customer service. And a lot of times, like I experienced with Remarkable, they won't even reply to you. And when they do reply, they're not very helpful. Um, so I thought it was really cool that they're just willing to send a tablet out with no agreement on what I was going to post or, you know, whether good or bad. So anyways, um, let's just get into some um, features of the Super Nomad. The top feature for me, obviously, is the e-ink screen. It's, um, if you don't know what e-ink is, essentially like the way a normal screen works is it has a bunch of different pixels and they're just like little tiny LED lights. And so they'll obviously light up, but it, you know, it can be really harsh because it's shooting light straight at your eyes. Um, the way e-ink works is that each one of those pixels is just this little dot that can be moved forward or backwards um, with a, a magnetic charge. And um, so it's kind of like physical pixels, you know, instead of shooting light at you, it just bounces light off of it. Um, like I have a light here, so you can just see the light reflecting off there, but it's very matte, you know? It looks like it just belongs in whatever environment you are, just like a book, which is really cool. And I've been reading for years on a Kindle Paperwhite. This is the same technology, it's an e-ink screen. There's um, a chapter from Harry Potter, and it's just so relaxing, you know, because I can just, um, I have like a hands of reading stand. I just put it above me when I'm um, going to sleep at night or right before. And it's just so relaxing. There's no light coming at me, you know, it just feels um, very natural. There's no blue light, so it doesn't cause insomnia or anything like that. Um, there's no eye strain, it's very relaxing. I like the black and white screen, you know. Um, I find that it's just like in a world where we're constantly insulted by social media and all these videos and advertising, everything is like super bright. It feels like you're living in a casino. You know, so I've come to really love the simplicity of black and white. 
Um, for most things, sometimes you need color, you know, if you're shopping or, I don't know, color grading a video, but I even work on an e-ink black and white monitor. Um, I've been working on it for more than a year now for pretty much everything, and I just love it. But the second thing I really like about the Supernote Nomad is the stylus. I went with the um, Lamy. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's L-A-M-Y. Um, this stylus looks a little more minimalist and kind of modern to me, which I love. It has actually two different nibs. So this is the ceramic nib. This is what you use for drawing and writing on the tablet. And then if you turn it, you've now got a ballpoint pen. And um, it's a little thin for me. I don't find it super practical to the point where I would use it for um, my main pen, you know, for drawing on paper, writing on paper, whatever. But it's nice in a pinch. And overall, I just like the design and the feel of this one. Um, but they also have the, I think it's Heart of, Heart of Metal. Heart of Steel, I'm forgetting the name, but they have other versions um, if you want something that feels a little bit different. This has a light feel. It feels like a normal pen that you write with, but then I really love the grip on this. I've been writing and illustrating with this and it has kind of like a triangle um, design. So it's really ergonomic. It's not super fat, but it's also not skinny to the point where your fingers are struggling to hold it. Um, I really like the, um, the Apple Pencil too. That worked really well for me too, but I did find that because it was more slim, I would kind of get fatigue, you know, for my fingers trying to hold onto something so small. So I, yeah, I really like this pen. It's got a clip-in, um, which is useful if you're, you know, putting it in a pocket, putting it on your sleeve, or putting it into the holder um, on the folio if you choose to get that. Um, so speaking of the folio, I think it's pretty convenient actually. It's very minimal, so you can see that it really adds almost no weight to the tablet whatsoever. And then you can just flip it like this. So it looks very much like a normal notebook. Um, and it's kind of embedded as well, so that's kind of cool. It just gives it a little bit of extra protection, drop protection if you dropped it um, this way or that way. There's not a ton of padding in here, so I don't know, if you're dropping it on a concrete floor, it may or may not help protect the tablet from um, breaking, but it definitely is better than having nothing at all. And one of the cool things about the folio is that it has a quick wake feature, which is something that's unique to um, Supernote, I think. And so as soon as you open it, it um, goes straight to whatever you were working on, which is nice. The fourth and probably most important feature that I love about the Supernote so far is drawing. Like, I feel as though I just haven't been drawing as much as I wanted to um, lately. And so when I got the Supernote, at first, I kind of felt like one of those things where you get this product and you're like, uh, you know, is this really gonna be practical? Is this really gonna make me more creative or more productive? Or is it just gonna be like another thing that's gonna sit around and I won't use it? So the first day I had the Supernote, I just started drawing with it to see what would happen. And I did like a sketch layer. And one of the things that's cool about the Supernote is that it has, um, multiple layers that you can work on. So I just have one layer that I can press now, but um, if you click the little plus, you've now got two layers. So you can kind of have like a sketch layer and then you can use different marker tips. So for example, they have um, pencils and more like a marker type feel um, and ballpoint pen. And then they also have the colors here. Um, so you can do like a lighter color and then you can sort of like sketch on a bottom layer and then you can put a layer over that and then um, draw your finished, finished sketch. But I don't know, it was just like right away, I just started having fun with it and I ended up drawing for more than an hour just working on this, just doing a little sketch of me um, on a hike with some creativity stuff. Um, and it just, it looks, you know, like something that I drew on a piece of paper. It doesn't have that sort of digital pixely feeling of like an iPad. Um, I've just noticed like when I was sitting there looking at the drawing afterwards, it could have fooled me, you know? It felt like I could have been looking at a piece of paper and um, the latency is very low. So you can see there's very little lag. And if you put this down in front of someone who's never um, heard of e-ink, doesn't know what it is, they could probably be fooled into thinking that they were drawing on some kind of physical object rather than a digital tablet, which is really cool. You can kind of hear also that it sounds like writing on a piece of paper. There is some texture there. In terms of what it actually feels like, I would say 
it's sort of halfway in between um, Remarkable and an iPad. So Remarkable has like more of a scratchy feeling to it. It's almost like even more scratchy than a piece of paper, but I would say it's closer to a real piece of paper. And then Supernote is like, it has texture on it, but the stylus flows around it a little bit more smoothly um, than the Remarkable, although it's not slippery like the glass of an iPad. So I ended up really liking it. Also, the quality is really good. When you zoom in or if you export, it still looks good. It's not pixelated, so there's definitely a lot of density. Another thing I found myself doing with the Nomad is just making little sketches for like thank you notes and things like that. For example, I was asking my um, naturopath that I work with a question about whether I should have a wood stove in my van, if that was you know safe from a health perspective. And so she gave me this really detailed answer. So I sent her an email and then I put this at the bottom. This is like goofy little sketch of me um, barefoot with like a stove head. Um, and uh, it was really cool. And the way that I did this is actually there's a Dropbox integration. So if you swipe down um, from the top of the screen, you get this menu and there's this little cloud button here. So if I click that, you can see that it says sync to Dropbox. And then it's really cool because it just shows up in this folder on my computer. And if I want to export something and then send it straight to me email, I can do that. Um, there's also a way to sign into your email if you want that um, on the Supernote. I don't really find email to be super distracting, honestly. Um, I don't get a ton of emails, um, but it's definitely less distracting than YouTube. So. Um, maybe at some point I'll connect it, like if I'm traveling. Another thing I've been doing with drawing is just making these little annotations for my YouTube videos and also kind of like adding details to my cover. Like I started with this little best of 24, 2024, and then I put that um, over top of a YouTube thumbnail for one of my barefoot shoe review videos. And it looks really cool. It just gives it a nice handwritten touch. Like initially when I was messing around with the Super no Nomad, I thought, okay, this is gonna be a good thing for like sketching and ideation, and but I'm not really gonna make finished work with it, you know? But I was just sitting down one day and I all I was doing was making a to-do list. I just started by writing this. I did like a header and underlined it. And then I started doing a to-do list um, and then in the process of that, it turned into like a full blown artwork, you know, full page artwork. And it looks really good. This is like a finished level artwork piece that I could put in a book, you know, about creativity or something like that, um, or feature in a video. And this kind of blew my mind because I was surprised. I thought, you know, the super note would be limited to the point where I would just not really be making quality work with it. You know what I mean? But, um, it works for me. It may not work for everyone. Um, if you're an artist that needs like multiple complex layers and different brushes and stuff like that. I mean, the, the brush set is limited. You basically have different pencil weights and then you have pens and you have um, markers, you know? So I think it would be really cool if Supernote kind of went after being like a little more advanced um, illustration tablet. Maybe if they partnered with um, Photoshop or Adobe something like that or procreate honestly that would be amazing um, or you know just in-house just adding more features um, but in general i thought it was really cool one of my favorite drawing features and i'm probably going to make a drawing specific video so we're not going to get too in depth here but they have this um, erasing feature where it's like a little selection tool and um, yeah so if you draw around something like this. So now I've got the upper part selected. You get this little menu here, and if you click the scissors, you can now move this around. And I think this honestly is the feature that I love most about drawing tablets because I'm someone that makes a lot of mistakes and I can also be kind of OCD when I'm drawing. So like if I draw something in the wrong place, I'm like, ah, man, like it looks really good, but I wish I could just move it. You can't do that with paper. So that's something I really love about this. You could also delete layers. And this honestly is kind of a nice feature because then instead of having to constantly like switch between layers, you can just like put a circle around something, move it around the page, you know, make it slightly bigger, slightly smaller, things like that. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was really cool. And I like having um, the different colors, even just working in the grayscale, because for example, like on the pencil, you can get kind of a darker gray um, there and then like a lighter gray for the YouTube. 
um, and you can highlight things and stuff like that. So for anyone that is an illustrator or just kind of like making visual journal entries or note taking and stuff like that, it's just excellent. The fifth feature I really liked about Supernote um, is being able to annotate PDFs. And this is actually a sketch that I did in Supernote and then I turned it into a PDF. It was a little annoying because I had to do it. I had to like export it and then um, just change the file name to PDF on my computer. Um, but it's actually not that inconvenient because the Dropbox folder syncs both ways. So like if I change a file um, on the Dropbox folder to PDF, it's just um, automatically synced into the export folder on the Supernote. So anyways, that's what I did. And then for a video, I did kind of like a whiteboard thing where I sort of had a pre-made drawing. Um, and then you can like, you can highlight things. So I was just talking about the process that I was gonna go through for a, um, a window install. And then I just kind of like went through and highlighted each of the steps. So that's kind of a cool like digital whiteboard thing that you can do. And you could either do it like this, annotating PDFs, um, or you can do it in the Atelier drawing app, um, which is also really fun. And I just like it because it doesn't create eye strain. You know, when you're filming a YouTube video, you don't have to be looking at an iPad. You can just have this, it looks more natural. It looks really good when you're filming it, it just kind of fits into the environment that's around it. And then another possibility is that I've been putting my YouTube scripts on here. So like if I'm filming a scripted video, I'll take this and then I'll put it up next to the camera so that I can just read off the lines. And there are all sorts of um, features like you can highlight text. You can either do it freehand like this. Um, and there's also an undo button, which is great as well. Um, you can add uh, type notes um, or you can do the highlighter so that it actually highlights text like in a normal word processing document. You can also make notes on PDFs. So I've made a little note right there and you can just draw directly on it, which is really cool. This would've been useful when I was a web designer because you're constantly like exchanging documents with clients and it can be really hard to explain things if you can't like write directly on something. And then for feature number six, there's the fact that you can just load books on here. And not only that, I mean, you can load them directly if you wanna put them into the uh, export folder. But then you can also integrate the Kindle app. Um, and so all of my books that I've been reading just automatically sync to here, which is great because I thought it would be a pain. I thought I'd have to like manually import them um, from my Kindle Paperwhite. Um, but now I can probably just get rid of this. Um, and then I'll just have one device that I can use for sketching and ideation and note taking and PDFs and um, reading and all that stuff. And Honestly, it looks really good. Um, I feel like it's even a little more crisp than the Kindle Paperwhite. And you can also do um, highlighting on here if you wanna do notes and stuff like that. But you can see there that you've got your typical Kindle options. And then um, once you're done reading the book, you can access all of the notes that you um, highlighted on, on the Kindle website. Then in terms of usability, I really like that Supernote has this swipe bar on the left because it can bring up a menu really quickly and then um, Something that I've been using is like the to-do um, app. It's You can have multiple lists if you want, which is kind of nice. And you enter your task here and you click add and then you can delete or you can cross them off. Um, and you get this really satisfying, you know, where it's crossed off and it gets moved to the bottom of the list. So I have a to-do list. I think something else that I might really use this for um, I haven't had to plan a complicated video since I've gotten the Nomad, but I'll oftentimes make a shot list. So this would be really cool because given the size of it, I can actually like fit this into a cargo um, pocket um, of my pants. And then I have all the shots that I need to get for a given video. Plus because I'm building out a van, I could see it being really useful for having steps that I need to do for an install, like you know, installing the flooring or doing insulation, things like that. But overall, my favorite feature about the Supernote Nomad so far is just like focus, you know, because unlike my books tablet, unlike my iPad, there is just no distractions. Like these are all the apps that you have right here. And for some people that might be a downside, maybe you need more apps um, and you simply can't live without them. But for me, I just don't get things done when I have access to too many things on whatever device I'm working on. So it's been really amazing so far just to have like this one thing that I can go to when I wanna sketch or when I kinda come up with ideas or check my to-do list, just anything that has to do with learning or productivity rather than having like all these papers scattered all over. And that doesn't mean that I'm gonna give up my journals. I think one thing that I really love a paper journal for is when I'm doing something really important emotionally, like 
This is a sketch that I made for my van and it's something that I wanna keep physically, you know? I don't want it to just be a file um, because it was like a specific moment in time, you know, this day when I really came up with this idea for my van. Um, so that's something that I think that paper um, still has value for. And so I honestly see a tablet like the Nomad is like a really good companion for paper rather than replacing it. And I also think it's important to mention that Supernote has no subscription service, unlike Remarkable. And I have a lot of respect for them because of that, because subscriptions are really profitable, you know, but it seems like um, with the modular design of it where you can replace components um, rather than having to buy a whole new thing and with them just making all the features available to people for the initial purchase price without having to continually pay month by month. And also just with my experience of customer service, it to me says that they care more about making an interesting, easy to use product that helps people be more creative and productive than they are in making a huge profit. That also makes me really excited to see where they're gonna take the tablet and what kind of improvements they're gonna add to it because it can only get more powerful from here. Um, for example, with the Word document, it seems pretty rudimentary so far. Like all you can do is just type a basic text note with some returns, but it was really awesome being able to work on a document outside and just sort of type on the keyboard while I was looking straight up at the tablet. Because although the Remarkable has a folio keyboard built in, which does look really seamless, you can't separate those, you know? So you're kind of like, hunched over, you know, having to look down when you're working on something. So I think it's really cool that Supernote supports using external keyboards. And I think if they improve the, the typing document um, app, it could become a really powerful like outdoor mobile typewriter type experience. But yeah, those are my initial thoughts on the Supernote Nomad and I'm really excited to keep trying it out. I want to make more videos because I have so much more to say and I can't possibly cover it in one video. So I want to do like a drawing video and a productivity video etc. But um, you can stay tuned for those. And in the meantime, if you'd like to support the channel, you can chop the referral links down below or check out my other e ink reviews to learn more about digital minimalism. Finally, if you have a question about the Supernote Nomad, let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Peace.